Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Wendelect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Database Migration Assessments. Hi guys, and we're doing a continuation of our series on migrations into Azure. Specifically today, we're gonna to be looking at database migrations from SQL Server into Azure. So if you've been with us over the last few videos, we've been doing a series on how to do app migrations into Azure. We started off by looking at what you need to learn in order to do app migrations and how to work with Azure in general. So we're looking at this not from a single app, but we're looking at this more from an enterprise scale. And so we're looking at moving large applications from on-premise systems into Azure. And we talked about the topics that you might wanna learn. Then we looked at the various things related to doing an assessment. And we looked at discoveries around various kinds of topics, including business process, governance, security, and apps and infrastructure, and then also things related to DevOps. And we talked about those different kinds of discoveries because those are gonna be important when we start talking about app migrations into Azure beyond just the technical aspects of moving apps into Azure. But a big part of this obviously is going to be apps and infrastructure that you're gonna be physically moving into Azure, but it impacts a lot of other things in your organization. Last week, we did a short video on how to get an assessment for apps that are coming off IIS and moving into Azure App Services. And we looked at a little utility that Microsoft provides for looking at Java, PHP, and .NET applications and moving those into Azure. Today, we're gonna to be doing something very similar with the Data Migration Assistant for getting an assessment report for moving from, my, from Microsoft SQL Server into Azure SQL. So this tool is very much like the App Migration Assistant where you have an instance of your application. In this case, we're gonna be using SQL Server and then it'll run an assessment report. Now, this one is focused on databases, obviously, but this one gives you a lot of variability in the uh, way that it will approach the problem. So it's gonna be able to look at databases in a wide array of different versions of SQL Server going back as far as like 2005 up to the most recent versions around 2019. And it's gonna be able to target various versions of Microsoft Azure SQL on Azure. So you can look at Azure SQL paths, you can look at managed instances, or you can look at Azure SQL VMs, and it'll give you an assessment report to show the readiness of a specific database against the target that you're going to be looking for. And then of course, it can do the migration for you. We're not going to be looking at this, but the point of the assessment though, is to give you an idea of what you need to remediate in order to do the migration. And it also give you warnings and other things that you might need to change, but it'll also show you blockers that will prevent you from migrating as well. It can do the migration for you if you so choose, but this is going to do more of a high level migration. It's not like a backup and restore. It's basically going to generate some scripts and then move the actual data using scripts that way. It's not gonna give you full transaction history of the database or anything like that. This is basically a data migration and a schema migration versus a full on database migration from one platform to the other. But in any case, our basic information that we're gonna be looking at today is around this assessment. We'll be looking at the actual migration piece in a future video. So I have set up on this particular machine right here, I have a instance of SQL Server 2019 installed. So if I pull up SQL Server uh, Management Studio and launch this application, I'm gonna show you the database. And I'm gonna be doing the assessment again. And now what I did with this is I created a SQL Server uh, 2019 instance and I installed the AdventureWorks and sample database from Microsoft onto this particular uh, database platform right here. And uh, it's just to show you what this looks like. It's just the standard AdventureWorks database with the data tables. Not a big database, so it's not gonna have a lot of data in it, but it's mostly interested in things like store procedures. It's gonna be looking at various features that might be turned on in the database that aren't compatible with what's going on inside of Azure SQL. Uh, so it's gonna be looking for things like that that are going to be outside the scope of what you can do. So just a, a, a database with just pretty much data tables or uh, something like that isn't gonna really uh, cause any problems most of the time for migrations. It's mostly whenever you're using features that have programmability in them, such as uh, triggers or specific kinds of queries that might exist in uh, triggers or in views, or if you're doing some of that kind of stuff in store procedures as well. So once you have the database though, you can then launch the Azure Data Migration Assistant like this. And this is a utility, you can download it from Microsoft. If you Google that, it'll give you a link to the actual 
uh, utility to download. You can download it, install it. Very easy to do that. And once you get, get it up and running, it looks like this. So it's very Spartan in its approach, but you basically have a plus sign here and it'll give you an assessment and migration. So we're looking at assessment today. And so I'm just gonna call it a MyDB. And, and then the, this is where you can sh uh, select the sources and the targets. So here you can say, database engine or integration services. So you can do uh, SQL Server integration services, and then uh, you can generate some things around that, or you can use the database engine and also let you uh, do uh, the SQL Server type or also uh, AWS RDS SQL Server, and then the target source. So it will allow you to go to Azure SQL databases. That's the platform as a service uh, offering. That's the standard offering. So that would be anything like everything uh, from small databases to large databases, but it's just running on the platform as a service offering there. And then you have uh, managed instances, which is a virtual machine that is managed by Microsoft, but it is isolated compute and isolated RAM. So you don't really touch the, the virtual machine, but it, um, an instance of SQL server running on that VM that Microsoft patches and maintains for you. So you have very little access to the virtual machine, but it is closer to SQL Server than what you would get with an Azure SQL database. And so if there's something that doesn't work with this, try this one. It costs more, but um, it, it's something that you don't have to manage. It's still as a service in some respects. And then uh, if you want to try, uh, if it doesn't work for any of these two, if you get blockers and you don't want to do some remediation, of course, you can always go to SQL Server on an Azure virtual machine, which would obviously just be an analog of what you're running on premise and you can still migrate to that but it will give you an idea of what you need to do to do that it'll um, point to you to the versions that it supports and so on but this one is the one we're going to be targeting today so i'm basically going to see if i can go from a sql server to an azure sql database and so once you get that going you can do a a assessment and this is what it's going to look for and so it's going to say check for database compatibility and check for feature parity. So you basically want to check for these kinds of things and make sure that the things are supported with the target that you have in mind. And this is going to take what your source database is and then against the target and then make sure that the features exist, make sure that the, that the database is compatible, mostly from this perspective right here with the database compatibility. So Click next, and then you. this is where you're gonna set up everything. So you basically wanna set your server up, and I'm gonna set mine up. And let's do a connect here. Make sure I'm connected. Uh, I got my password wrong. Let's do a connect here. And then this is where you select your databases. You can select more than one database if you so choose. And I only have one on this one, so I'm just gonna choose that one. And then once you have everything set up, you can just simply hit start assessment. And it's going to run the assessment. Usually this runs fairly quickly, depending on the complexity of your database. But given that this is not a very complex database, it's very small, um, it's going to show me you know, the, the kinds of things that I might need to change. So this is a SQL Server feature parity. It's telling me that, okay, there's an unsupported feature. Azure SQL database does not support uh, EKM and Azure Key Vault integration. Okay, that's fine. It's not going to be a big deal if I want to check compatibility issues. It's gonna show me a couple of things here that it might um, show me uh, for this. Full text search is not, uh, has changed from SQL Server 2018. Oh, yeah, okay, I get that. It says migrate to 2014 to 2016. And this is on a 2019 box, so that's not gonna be a showstopper. Um, compatibility report right there, that's just the version around there. And if I look at this one, this tab is gonna basically show me the same information. Now, if there was other issues like migration blockers, or deprecated features or issue perform uh, information issues like that, those are gonna show up here as well. And it'll give you a detailed report of what you need to do to change stuff in your database. So if there is something like a store procedure that has, that is calling out to unmanaged code or something like that, that would be one of those migration blockers because that would be supported inside of Azure SQL. So you might have to go back and check the kind of target that you wanna manage, work towards. In that case, you probably wanna think about either remediating the issue or using an Azure SQL on a virtual machine or something like that. So this tool will give you the ability to do those kinds of reports. And once you have that, 
you can do the next part of the assessment and you can save the, the the file off here and you can do that you know put it on your desktop you know, wherever you want to put it and then you can use this as part of a overall planning strategy for doing azure sql migrations and include this uh, output for that uh, database migration project that you might have as part of a larger plan to move something into Azure. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.